All right, welcome back to the anatomy lab. Refurbishment is, is finished. Models are all back in again. We're using it for teaching. It's lovely, isn't it? Um, there's still a bit of building work going on, so avoid, excuse the odd bang and crash. Um, this week, the ENT guys were delivering a bit of anatomy. ENT, the ear, nose and throat surgeons. Um, one of their teachers was missing, so I gave them a hand and uh, learned a few things. Probably things I've seen before in textbooks, but things I could see for myself. I thought I'd share it with you. We've done eye stuff, we've done nose stuff. This is about the lacrimal system, the lacrimal drainage system. So we're gonna be looking at, how, looking at how, where tears come from, how they go across the eye, where they're collected and stuff like that. All right, so lots of uh, 4K close-ups of my wrinkly middle-aged eyes. Lacrimal fluid, what's it good for? Tears, well, you're probably familiar uh, with it, that it's uh, a watery secretion and it's a little bit salty, so it's a saline secretion. It's also got a lysozyme enzyme in there, which means that it's also able to kill bacteria, which is a good idea. Um, it keeps the conjunctiva and the um, cornea, the clear bit, moist. Um, it also collects particles of dust and what have you that might collect in there and washes them away from these sensitive surfaces. And there is some oxygen dissolved in it which will help supply the cornea and also some nutrients. Now lacrimal fluid is made by the lacrimal gland. There's one in each eye. Um, there may be some other um, like smaller accessory glands helping as well. But they tend to be found, here's a bit of blue tack, up in the kind of the lateral part of the orbit up here. So quite well covered up by stuff. So the lacrimal glands are in the lateral superior part of the orbit. Each gland has got several ducts coming from it. So it's not just a single duct that could get blocked. There are multiple ducts. And um, the lacrimal gland receives parasympathetic. So that is autonomic motor innovation originally from the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, uh, which is why I often refer to the facial nerve as the snotty, weepy, dribbly nerve of the face because it switches on so many glands around here and makes, yeah, snotty, weepy, dribbly stuff. Um, so then the tears start here and they're secreted onto the surface of the eye. The gland probably produces about one microliter a minute, something like that, and there's a general flow from here across to here, so the inferior medial or nasal corner of the orbit. Now this is a bit that I found cool, so I'm sure you've seen in the medial corner of your, of your eye, there's um, a little bit of a kind of a pink corner, and that's the lacrimal lake. This is where the tears collect. And the lake can probably hold about 10 microliters, maybe-ish, of, of lacrimal fluid before it starts to overflow and you have tears running down your face. Um, and in there, there's a, little, there's a little lump, and that lump is the lacrimal caruncle. That sounds like a very British word, doesn't it? Caruncle. Uh, and the lacrimal caruncle is essentially, essentially skin and it has some, some glands in there, sebaceous glands and what have you, um, which means, like other skin, which means that this is a corner of the eye that can get infected. You can see some infection, inflammation, that sort of thing at that point there. Um, but the lacrimal fluid collects there, and then if you, if you look at your lower eyelid and your upper eyelid, let's probably do one at a time, and you pull the eyelid down, you can see close to the medial end there's a little raised bit, a papilla, and that's the lacrimal papilla. And in that little raised papilla is a hole, the punctum. So the lacrimal punctum. And there's one, as I say, inferiorly, and one superiorly. And these are the starts of the lacrimal canaliculi. So each one is the opening of a lacrimal canaliculus. And these are tiny little tubes. So there's two tubes going from either eyelid, medially here. Ugh. And if we look at a skull, we see, we always see, in this is a plastic skull, um, in the medial corner, the medial inferior corner of the, the, the orbit there, we see this hole. So this is the start of the nasolacrimal 
duct, or rather the nasolacrimal duct would be in here, and also the nasolacrimal sac. So the sac then is a little kind of dilated swelling, so those two lacrimal canaliculi pass to the lacrimal sac, which would sit in here, which collects that lacrimal fluid, and then drains the lacrimal fluid through the lacrimal duct, or the nasolacrimal duct. And now if we, had a, if we were looking at a real skull, we'd see that pipe cleaner popping out inferior to the inferior nasal concha, so within the inferior meatus. Um, which means that, of course, we uh, end up getting the tears in our nose. You know about that. If you cry a lot, you get the tears coming out of your nostrils. But normally, the tears are slowly creeping across your eye, draining into the nasal cavity, and you, you swallow them. Recycling, see? So because those lacrimal canaliculi are two tiny little tubes, that means that the lacrimal fluid in the lacrimal lake can be collected by capillary action, which will work against gravity and other forces, to draw that fluid into the lacrimal sac. You know capillary action or the capillary effect? So if you stick like um, a skinny tube, like a skinny straw into a body of water, then the surface tension of, of the water and the adhesion of the water to the surfaces of that tube means that it'll get pulled up that tube kind of against gravity and kind of against what you might expect to occur. So these skinny tubes probably exist rather than there being a large opening to help draw the, water, draw the lacrimal fluid from the lake into the, the lacrimal sac. It's pretty cool, right? Um, the blinking then helps push the lacrimal fluid across the eye and any dust that collects in the eye will then get pushed towards the lacrimal lake to get removed from the surface of the eye and get collected. Um, and there, there's a little bit of debate I think about maybe some muscular forces around this region also helping pump the lacrimal fluid through the lacrimal drainage system but you know um, interesting stuff if you want to look it up and delve really deeply into it but it's probably too deep for most people. Too deep for me. <laughs> Um, okay, see you guys next week. I thought it was cool.